Yes, we're going to be talking about generators today, but uh, you need to get this grass watered. Man, it's looking so much better out here. Just posted a video about how, what I'm doing on this lawn. Today, I'm going to show you how I kind of trick a system into using a very small generator in a whole house plug system. So I'm actually going to power my whole panel with a little tiny generator that is extremely quiet, extremely fuel efficient. You have to stick with me on this because this can get a little bit confusing. So I'm gonna walk you through this step by step. I'll show you the generator, but first I need to run up to the panel and explain why I can use a generator that only produces 110 or 120 on a box that is has 240 amps inside, 240 volts inside of it. It has all those breakers. So let me show you what I'm doing real quick. Now, I'll tell you what, when the sun comes out in the afternoon, it is getting hot. And the first thing I'm gonna tell you is if you don't have um, a small window unit in a house somewhere, like in your master bedroom, like we have, you need to get one of them. Cause when the power goes out, it's a lifesaver. So this is in our beach house. This is actually kind of a smaller unit. Look at the Jack Russell sleeping over there. <laughs> <clears throat> this is not a huge house and what we do is in the afternoons we actually shut down the main HVAC system and we run a small window unit and it keeps this room 70 something degrees so we can run this unit once it gets hot once it hits noon we actually turn that little window unit on that's only pulling about 600 watts and we run that all day and then come nighttime when we want to cool off the other bedrooms in here and bathrooms and of course we turn on the main hc but if we have a power failure <laughs> i can't run my main hvac system on a small generator so we use these and now i showed you in a previous video where i also use these in our master bedroom in the other house and they're wonderful just a small window unit as a backup it's absolutely amazing now before we begin there's going to be a bunch of comments about whole house generators and I use this and I use a propane and I use all these. This is, you have to understand what we're doing here. I'm teaching you a lesson that many people learn through Hurricane Helene. Helene, Helene. And that is that it's great to have a 12,000 watt generator until you have to feed that thing gasoline 24 hours a day for more than three days. You get into day four, five, six, seven, eight, guess what? How many of those red cans do you have sitting around? So this is for gas generators. That, one of those large generators, if you have a 12,000 watt generator, it's gonna run your whole house, it's great, but it's gonna use probably in about 12 hour, 10 to 12 hour period, that thing's gonna burn about eight gallons, eight to 10 gallons of gas. It's gonna suck up the gas. And you don't need that much wattage or watts or volts. You don't need that much power all the time. Matter of fact, if you'll measure what's going on in your house, you'll quickly learn that the average house just running some LED light bulbs, a window unit, your refrigerators is only going to be pulling maybe about 1500 to 2000 watts. That's all you need. So you're excessively, you're overpowering your house and you're using way too much fuel. So what I say is I would rather see you buy two generators, buy a generator that's big enough to power what you need for an hour or two so in the morning you get up everyone wants to take a shower so you need your hot water heater if you have a well you need your well running you want to use the stove you want to use all these 220s go ahead and use that but for the most part for the rest of the day and even into the rest of the night all you need is just a little bit of electricity the generator i'm going to show you on 1.5 gallons of gas will run approximately six hours the other one that i showed you last a few months ago it's the uh, 2200 watt inverter. That thing runs uh, almost eight hours on one gallon. Anyways, so we're talking about fuel efficiency here and thinking outside the box. All right, so we're inside the little laundry room. My electrician came by and installed that whole house plug down there. And what do you have to do according to code is you have to install an uh, interlock switch. So this interlock switch will not allow my generator this is my generator turn on switch here will not allow me to turn this without first killing the power from the from the street so i have to kill the power from the street 
then I can turn this on and then I can turn my power on from my generator. However, understand how panels work. You have two hot leads that are coming into your panel and each one of these hot leads is represents, we'll call it 120. So you have a 120 wire powering this side, a 120 uh, a line powering this side. So you'll have two hot lines coming into your box. When you look at these smaller breakers, this is only touching one side, this is only touching the other side, this one's touching this side, this one's touching the other side. So these little 120s are only touching one side. To make 240, this double breaker is actually touching both sides. This 240 is touching both sides, so it's pulling two of those hots, adding those together and making 240. Now I have excessively added orange stickers because if I'm not here and my wife wants to do this, I need to train her to say, okay, everything with an orange sticker is a 240. It needs to be shut off. So you need to shut off everything that's a 240. Here's the water heater, which we shut off when we leave anyways. That's why that's labeled. We shut off anything that's a 240. And then we can bring this power into this box. So anything, anything that is a 120 in this house, I can run. I can run TVs, I can run Wi-Fi, I can run all the lights, ceiling fans, small window units. I can run all of that off this little generator. There isn't anything I need to run desperately that's a 240. Got it? So that's what I'm doing. So this is a little trick where you can take a small generator and actually hook it into a whole house plug and run a small generator. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna trick it. We're gonna trick the plug situation. We're gonna take an RV plug, which I show you in a minute, and then we're gonna make, there's um, a conversion that you can buy that converts it into a four prong 240 that will send power to this box. But you gotta remember, you're not sending two 120s. You're only sending 120 to this box. So that 120 is running down both these sides, but it's not enough to power this 240. So this is a little bit confusing. Make sure you understand this. If you don't understand it, drop a question down below, but I would definitely have an electrician come out. You have to have an electrician come out and do this by code. They need to install this interlock. They need to test everything, make sure it all works. And if you can tell them exactly what you plan to do. I told my electrician, I don't plan to run 240. I plan to shut off all my 240s and, and do the conversion plug. And he said, that's fine. He said, a lot of people do that, no problem. But you just have to understand what you can power and what you can't power. So let me show you, I'll start that generator up. I'll hook it up and I'll show you what's running. So I'm about to take you downstairs and show you this plug situation. And this is where people get confused. The front of these small generators have a three prong. They have a three prong plug that has one hot, one ground, and one neutral wire. A four prong generator plug, which can, which can produce 240, is going to have four prongs. It's going to have two hots, a neutral, and a ground. So what this wire does, this conversion, is it takes that one hot wire and it splits it into the two. Does that make sense? I hope so. So we're taking a plug that only has one hot wire, we're converting it, it splits it into two. So now you have two hot wires going in, but it's not truly a full power 120 two hot wires. That's where the conversion comes in and that's where people get confused a little bit. So you cannot add a 120 and a 120 because you're really just splitting that 120 that can power all those 120s and get all those circuit breakers on both sides. But that's why you have to shut off the double ones and that's where people get confused. So when you look at your generator, if it has that three prong, I call it an RV plug. I'll put up on the screen what it's actually called has three prong, you can put that in there, and then this cord will actually split that one hot wire into two hot wires, so that at your panel, you have 120 running down both sides and all those breakers are running. Well, this does not have 240, but my box over here is designed to input for 240. So this has what we're gonna call, we're just gonna call this to keep it simple, an RV plug on the front. See this little three prong here? and have plastic over right now. But that goes in here and it goes into here, into that three prong. This does not supply two 
positives. This only supplies one positive. Now, I have a cord that tricks this. What it does is it takes that one positive and it splits that one positive into two positives. So now, this is a cord that you would use on a generator that produces 240. So I'm gonna be sending 120 to both of my rods, but not enough power to actually create a 240. So what I can do is I can run everything in this house that's a 120, regular outlets, um, a window air unit, light bulbs, AC, whatever I wanna do. So that's how I'm gonna trick it. So again, I go from what I call an RV plug to the four prong 240 plug generator. So this is a special plug and you have to really be confident what you're doing with your boxes and switching this. But basically it's pretty simple. I am sending only 120 to my box. I'm not creating any 240s. Shut off all your 220s, get that converter and plug it into your house. If I wanna power everything, I can break out my big generator for an hour or two in the morning. Everybody can take showers. You can run your dishwasher, just run your house like normal. But for the rest of the day and even into the night if you wanted to, run it on this thing, run it on that. It even has an eco switch that I'll show you that's so quiet, <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Matter of fact, she texted the neighbors and said, hey, we just wanna let you know we're running our generator. She's like, I didn't even know it was on. All right, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start this up for you guys, let you see it. This one's pretty simple. You go over to choke, you turn it to choke, you start it, pull it, start it. Once it starts, you put it to run, let it run, hook up your cord and switch over your panel box inside. I already had it running for a while, so I'm just gonna put it right to run. I don't think I need to choke it, let's see. Let's see if I do or not here. Okay, so now I'm standing six feet away from this and I can talk normally to this camera, which I cannot do with any other generator. Now I'm gonna put it in eco mode. Switch here. Now it's in eco mode. <laughs> Dude, I am six to eight feet away from this thing and I'm recording a video without yelling. This is my normal tone. Is that crazy or what? So obviously you wanna have this way far away from your house. Now you're gonna look and say, but Doc, this is, this is actually a screened in porch. There's no, there's no way that carbon monoxide can get in. Um, this actually, we position it pointed out this way. There's plenty of cross breeze and the main house doesn't even start to way back here, by the way. Then I have a 25 foot cord, that 25 foot cord. If I wanted to, I could actually put the generator over here. That might not be a bad option. I plug it in here, then I go upstairs and I do all my flip switching, my flip switching, and I'll go up and show you that in the box. Okay, so I just made the wife hook this system up and start the generator because she's going to be here sometimes without me. But let me show you what this little unit is running right now. So I've got it out here. I've got a locking cord on it. It's outside here. The main house doesn't even start till here, so there's no threat of carbon monoxide under here. I've got a green light. I've got power going in. Nice long cord. All right, so I'm gonna show you that little 3600 unit out here. I've got LED bulbs running down here. LED bulbs here. I've got this refrigerator downstairs that we have. So I have a downstairs refrigerator. I have an upstairs refrigerator running and TV, internet, all that stuff. All right, so I've got a ceiling fan out here running. We have got lights and I have got this window unit running. <laughs> lights in here, TV. I've got two Wi-Fi systems running. This one right here is refrigerator. This is all running. Oh, my computer is running, you can see. 
So all this stuff is actually running off that little generator now. All right, so I'm gonna sit back in the shade here in a minute. So if you hear water run, I'm not peeing by the way. That's actually the spa draining into the pool over here. Isn't that pretty? Look at that bamboo over there. That was 36 inches when we planted that. Anyways, so let me just explain a little more in depth on this. This is from years of experience. In 1996, I think it was, Hurricane Fran hit us. We were miles inland. We were without power for, I think it was 12 or 14 days. Let me say that again, 12 days without power. <laughs> now, if you had to run a big generator for 12 days, if, and you're gonna use eight gallons a day, multiply that out, 12 times eight, what is that? You're looking at what, 100 gallons of fuel? You don't have that sitting around. But here's what people don't understand. And we learned from Hurricane Helene, and that is that gas station shut down too. We drove, right after the hurricane, we drove from here back to the house, the farm property. And what we learned was that no gas stations were open. There was one gas station open in a little hobunk, pobunk town, and there were hundreds of cars at that gas station because there was no fuel around. Now, Jeff, um, the guy that made that other video that I re referenced, uh, he's an off-grid homesteader. He said the same thing. That was one of the lessons that he learned. Fuel, fuel, fuel. Now, I know people are going to drop comments down below about um, I use propane. I have, uh, I, I have a propane whole house. I don't have to worry about this. The average person doesn't have that. They don't have a 1,000-gallon propane tank buried, or they don't, may not have natural gas. We don't have gas here. We don't have any form of gas. So this is for the average person that can spend a couple hundred bucks to have an interlock switch, or if you already have one, this is one way where you can do something that's called partitioning. You can buy a big whole house generator, gas generator for about 900 bucks. Run that for one to two hours a day. Start it up in the morning, everyone knows the rules. Take your shower, do your cooking, do your dishes, run your laundry, do what you have to do for one to two hours, then shut off that big one, and then run this little one. Even if you just, let's just say you have a power outage for, for 24 hours, I'd much rather run this little one for 24 hours. I don't need to have my hot water heater and the stove going. I just want my refrigerators on, I wanna have lights, I wanna have TV, and I wanna have Wi-Fi. I just wanna have the basic essentials. That's where this comes. Here's the other thing, this is portable. This is a grab and go. Let's say you have to bug out, let's say the hurricane you know, destroys your house or tornado hits us, whatever. You can take this generator, throw this generator in the back of your car. You can't grab a 12,000 watt generator and throw it in the back of your car. It's probably gonna weigh about 200, 250 pounds. This thing weighs like 40 pounds. The smaller one was like 30 pounds. You can throw that in the back of your car and take that with you, it's portable. You can even take this on vacation. So if you're going somewhere on a longer vacation, maybe to the beach where they have hurricanes, take this little generator and a couple extension cords with you you can just you can run it into your vacation house because I guarantee you that vacation house probably doesn't have generators in it this is just from lessons learned partitioning power and understanding that when you go into a long-term situation fuel becomes the issue again I'm not talking about propane or natural gas I'm talking about people that have gas generators this is a little trick that I've learned if you have any questions, drop it down below, but I strongly recommend, if you're still a little bit concerned, um, call an electrician, tell them what you plan to do. Say, I want a whole house system, I'm gonna use this conversion, I'm gonna shut off all my 220s, 240s, and I'm just gonna run 120 to it. That's what I do with mine. My guy was like, hey, no problem. Um, I actually, he actually does the same thing in his house too. So I hope that's helped. If you have any questions, I will link to the generator cord. I'll link to the generator. If there's anything else that you want to understand, I'll even that whole house plug. Um, interlock switches, by the way, are specifically designed per panel. So your electrician will have to come out and look at your panel to figure out the interlock. It's not something I can link to. Uh, hope it helps. I'll talk to you later. Die.